pursue and you shall recover all but he would not have recovered anything had he stayed at Ziglag nothing would have happened had he had he remained at Ziglag and said I'm just going to wait and I'm going to let the Lord bring it my way it doesn't work like that praise the Lord there has to be a willingness on our part to roll up our sleeves and to get the job done preach wouldn't Praise the Lord. Effort, you know, this, see, when Christianity is presented this way, uh, you don't get many amens because I, I'm throwing the ball back at you. And what it shows is many of us have been waiting for the Lord to do what the Lord has been waiting for us to do. See, you, you, you're where you are because you hadn't been working. Praise the Lord. You're struggling because you're lazy. You, you're not delivered because you don't want to be delivered. Because one thing I do know, God is a deliverer. There are, no, there are no vices that you got to get prayed for a hundred times before, you, before the Lord can deliver you. Mm -mm, there are no demons that can resist Jesus Christ. There's no situation that, well, it just seems it's just so hard for him to get over it. He doesn't want to. When you want to, when you are willing to pursue, then God can meet you halfway. But you got to want to. The question was not, Lord, will you do it for me? The question is, Lord, shall I pursue? Hallelujah. I'm not going to even go after him, Lord, unless you allow me to. But once the Lord said pursue, God said, not only shall you pursue, but you will recover all. But in recovery, you got to work for it. I want to go to college. Well, how are your grades? What are your study habits like? I want to be blessed. Well, what are you saving? I want, I want, I want, a, I want a wife. Uh, well, how are you preparing for one? I want a husband. Praise the Lord. Well, what are you doing to get one of them? You got to put forth an effort yourself. Can I get a witness? Because if you don't pursue it, it will never happen. I feel like today that I'm preaching to a Presbyterian church. But I'm going to preach anyhow. Good God Almighty, shall I pursue? Where is your energetic effort? Praise the Lord. Where is your aggressiveness to get over the hump? How much energy is, are you putting into becoming that person that the Lord would have you to be? Or have we been overtaken by that spirit of apathy and the spirit of complacency where we're all comfortable with our current condition, we're comfortable with our current state, and we're not down for anything that, that, that shakes us from our comfort zone. But I'll tell you this, if you're going to get the glory of God, if you're going to see what the Lord has for you, you've got to be willing Praise the Lord to let the Lord shake you up and to meet God halfway. Paul says, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. He's pursuing. He says, I, but I follow after that I may apprehend that which I am apprehended of. Now, let me speak to you about the apostle's goal. He says that, that I may apprehend that for which I am also apprehended of in Christ. Or apprehend simply, as you know, means to overtake, to seize, or to catch. That is, Paul's goal in life was consistent with Christ's goal in saving him. When the Lord saved Paul, Paul said, now Lord, you saved me to be a man of God. Well, you know what? I'm going to pursue being what you saved me to be. Some of us get saved and then try to run from salvation. I don't understand the new movement that's in the church world today. Church that doesn't look like church. Christians who do not look like Christians. Seems like to me the new popular thing is you, if you got a church, you remove the cross. You remove everything that says church. What's with that? Uh, we dress like we're going to a nightclub. 
the churches with dark ceilings and 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 smoke and scrobe lights and the church looked more like a rock and roll concert a stage than the house of God praise the Lord God called us to be the light God called us to make a difference he called us praise the Lord to look like what he started on the inside of us and the saints should reflect praise the Lord uh, Christ and Paul says I want to grab hold to that which has gotten hold of me you remember Jane Cleveland's I went to a meeting one night and he said my soul wasn't right but something got a hold of me well when will we get a hold of that something see when the Lord grabs you the Lord wants you to grab him when the Lord saves you the Lord wants you to turn around and say all right now Lord that I'm saved now I want to be everything that you saved me to be I'm not trying to run away from my salvation let me tell you something don't run away don't fight God. We, we studied today how Israel had became refactor, refractory. They were hard to manage. And everything the Lord told them to do, they argued with God. Every, every di uh, direction that the Lord gave them, they pushed against God. And they became, it became like herding cats. And everything the Lord asked them to do, they fought God. You know what happened? After a while, God said, I give up. And then when the Lord said, I give up, he says, now nah, I'm going to call the Chaldeans. And when they come and when they finish with you, you're going to wish to God you had did, you have done the things I told you to do. Brethren, stop pushing back. Let's move into the things of Christ. How many of us still believe this doctrine? How many still believe that the doctrine of Christianity is still the number one cure of all ills? I thank God for these other things, but nothing works like salvation. I thank God, praise the Lord, for other disciplines, but nothing works like salvation. Thank God, hallelujah, for these things. They have their place, but nothing eclipses salvation. They have, if you don't believe me, go to some of these, uh, but they may not be out there today, but on any given Sunday, they got children out there now playing soccer and sports on Sunday mornings. And you got people saying, well, if you can just keep them in sport, just give them sports, sports. And then listen, Jesus didn't die for the gospel of sports. J Jesus died for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Nothing takes the place of getting to know the Lord. All this stuff is the spirit of Antichrist because it's designed to take the place of Jesus Christ. Nothing can keep you like the word of God. Nobody is a keeper but the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. But you got to have a mind to be kept. And the devil is trying to replace Jesus. Replace Jesus with this. And replace Jesus with that. And replace church with the other. Instead of, and the saints are going along with that replacement. Whereas you, we should be the main ones who say, now wait a minute. I'll let nothing come between me and my devotion for the Lord. I'll do that when I have time for it. I'll get around to that when I can. But when it comes to my Savior, I want to grab hold of that which has grabbed hold of me. That's the difference between growing in the church and struggling in the church. Some of you, you follow Jesus. You, you follow at too great a distance. You need to come in. Young folk, come in. Don't, don't follow Christ at a great distance. You'll miss out on your blessing. Jump in with both feet. Grab hold. You never know. God, The Lord can put an anointing on you that can take you around the world. The Lord can anoint you and your voice will be heard on high. But instead, you're trying not to grab hold to that which has grabbed hold of you. I want to hold Jesus just as hard as Jesus is holding me. I don't want Jesus to fight me, to keep me. I'm not fighting, Lord. I'm flowing with the program. Do I have anybody here who will tell the Lord, Lord, I'm going to flow with you? Really, really, we'll call According to Jeremiah, we're called to be putty in God's hand. We're called to be, praise the Lord, uh, the, the clay on the wheel. Yes. 
where the Lord can make us and mold us and shape us. Ezekiel said he's going to take out that heart of stone and give us a heart of flesh. Whereas we're constantly trying to resist. But my, my God, you ought to let the, the, the Lord take that from you. And you just leap in and say, Lord, I just want to be all that you would have me to be. I think it's amazing that Paul wanted to apprehend that which had apprehended him. He wanted to grab hold to that that, he was, that had grabbed hold of him. He says again in verse 13, and I'm almost finished, Rocky, we're going to shout in just a minute. He said, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. He says it for the third time. Paul addresses the Philippians with a gentle, intimate, affectionate uh, term. He says, brethren, Amen. To move their hearts away from the Judaizers, those who were opposing him. Uh, uh, he wanted to move them toward him for the third time. He says, uh, gives a disclaimer. He says, I do not rec regard myself as having laid hold of all of this yet. He says, uh, the apostle's intent was polemical. He was making an argument. He was arguing against the teachings of error. Whereas the false teachers were teaching that they were already perfect. Paul was teaching that this is not the case. He says, I do not count myself to have apprehended. He says, but this one thing I do. Now, I want to talk to you for a minute about the apostles' strategy. Because you see, some of us are in trouble because our mind is too scattered. We don't concentrate enough. There's too many things going on in our lives. Oh, I heard the Holy Ghost told me when I was working on this part of the sermon, he said, tell, tell my people to slow down. Tell them that they got to have too many things going on in their lives. Notice what Paul said in verse 13. Praise the Lord, the B clause. He says, but this one thing I do. This one thing. Notice the level of concentration. There were many things going on in his life, but that was one main one thing. You see, all of us have busy lives, but every one of us, if we're going to be what God would have us to be, he's got to be that one thing. He said, this one thing I do. See, the maximum effort has got to be a part of that one thing. Maximum effort uh, without focus concentration is useless. You can try, but if you don't concentrate, you're going to miss the mark every time. Single, singular focus people are the ones who succeed. In most cases, praise the Lord, to dabble in much is to succeed at nothing. Some of us, we are jack of all trades, but masters of none. James said in James 1 and 8, that the double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Psalms 86 and 11 says, Teach me thy way, O Lord, and I, and I will walk in thy truth. Then he says, Unite my heart to fear thy name. God, there's so many things going on. Bring my thoughts in. Organize my thoughts. Organize my mind. Because I'm scattered, Lord. I'm, I'm trying this and I'm trying that. I'm over here. I'm over there. God says, he says, bring me in. Concentrate me where I can do this one thing. You got to set your mind. I feel my help. You got to set your mind on being good at God's one thing. Say amen. You can do a whole lot of other things, but you got to make Jesus that priority. The Bible said, Proverbs said this, let thine eyes look straight on. Let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established. Turn not from the right hand nor to the left. Remove not thy foot. Uh, remove thy foot from evil. That is, don't let yourself get distracted. You know what you've been called to do? Do it. Focus your eyes on it. Concentrate on it. Ask God to give you power to do it. And the Lord will give you power. I just read Proverbs chapter 4, verse 25 through 27. This is this singular Paul had a single driving compulsion to be like Christ. What is your drive? If there's something in your life that eclipses wanting to be like Christ, that thing is an idol. 
That is idolatry. You got to get that out the way and put Jesus first. Praise the Lord. Moms and dads, make sure those children are reading the Bible. Don't, let, don't send the message that everything is more important than Scripture. They can go to the public schools and the private schools and the Christian schools. But I wonder how many of them ever go to Sunday school. Praise the Lord. They, they know all of the video games. Know all of the game board. Know all that stuff. But, but how many scriptures do they know? Where is Jesus? Where is the pursuit? Let me tell you something. You will never outwit the devil if you are serving God haphazardly. Praise the Lord because Satan is coming after every one of us with a very organized plan of attack. The Bible says put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The word wiles means method of attack. It is the orderly handling of a subject. When Satan watches us before he attacks us, he studies us. He checks out our mind. He checks out our likes and our dislikes, our preferences. He checks out our flavors. He finds out who and what appeals to us. And he organizes an attack. Now, if the devil is organized on this side, and if we are supposed to resist him, and we are not organized at all, it's just a matter of time before the devil is going to destroy you. you got to be organized, young man. If you're going to make it, you got to have a fasting life. Praise the Lord. If you're going to make it, you got to have a prayer life. You can't, you don't hear me. You can't just say, I'm going to make it the best way I can. You might pray one day. You skip prayer the next day. You read the Bible only on Sunday when the preacher tells you to read the Bible. Saints, you can't beat the devil that way. It's got to be intentional. Praise the Lord. I understand making A's in school. Good. You're making A's and B's and you're on the honor roll. But what do you know about Jesus? What can you say about the Bible? Because if you don't know the Lord, everything else is a waste. Paul organized his priorities and he said this is the mindset of the apostle. This is his strategy. He said this one thing I do. Good God Almighty, he says, I'm forgetting those things that are behind me. And I'm reaching for the things that are before. Now, let me tell you something. All of us can adopt this. I'm almost done. But he declares that there is a negative and a positive aspect of this concentration. Let's deal with the negative first. Negative is forgetting those things that are behind. Paul made a break with everything that was in his past. Sometimes you got to make a break with everything, both the good and the bad. Did you hear what I said? Both the good and the bad. Why the good? You can't live on past victories forever. You can't live on beating the devil. Praise the Lord. For, uh, in 19, in 2008, and here we are, and the devil is kicking your behind in 2017. You can't live forever on yesterday's victories. You got to thank God for it, but you got to move on from there. The Lord saved me in 77, but my God, I had to have a whole lot of time touches a whole lot of visitations and a whole lot of victories between that time and this time I can't just look back to that one day hallelujah there's got to be something else that has happened in my life since that time so sometimes even yesterday's uh, victories you got to let go and just as we can't live in the past on past victories neither should we live neither should we be debilitated on past sins if past victories can't keep us forever then past sins ought not to be allowed to hold you down forever yes you messed up yes I dropped the ball yes I went the wrong way but God delivered me and when you've been delivered, when the Lord has brought you out, you can't let nobody hold you back there. I don't care who try to bring it up. I don't care who try to remind you. You got to know how to tell the devil, yes, I was guilty, but I've been washed and Jesus forgave me. And I'm not going to stay back there in that mess because I have a future. 
So Paul said, I'm forgetting those things that are behind me. I'm pushing the past in the past because the past is not relevant. We must make maximum effort in the present to gain momentum for the future. The question is, what are you doing now? I know what you did then, but what are you doing now? Are you putting forth effort to be what the Lord would have you to be now? Are you climbing the highway, climbing the hill right now? Thank you, Jesus. You can tell that Paul was glad to be in the press. He said, I'm forgetting those things that are behind me. That's the negative, but the positive is I'm reaching forth. That I'm stretching. The word reaching here literally describes stretching a muscle to its limit. Straining every muscle, doing everything you can to reach the finish line. I wonder who's working as hard as they can to reach the finish line. I want to give you some advice today. In your pursuits, leave it all on the field. Do everything that you can. God, I'm going to do everything I can to be all that you'd have me to be. Thank you, Jesus. In my attempt to make it, I want to empty my gun. I don't want any more plans in the toolbox. I want to use everything I have because I want to do my part to be the person that God would have me to be. If you feel this way about it, lift your hands and thank God for being in the press. Thank you, Jesus. You see the enemy. The enemy will stop you if you don't try to this degree. The, 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 the challenge is the problem is that most of us do not put forth enough effort. We make excuses. It's everybody else's fault. Someone else has done you wrong. Someone else has mistreated you. It's always someone else. But saints, I want to tell you, drop that way of thinking and say, God, it's you and it's me. And I'm going for you with everything that I have. Because you're able, able to keep me, able to strengthen me. So I'm reaching for everything that's before me. And saints, when you uh, look at the motion, when you study what he's doing, when you look at what he's saying, it's just like running. It's just like swimming. You're reaching and you're pulling behind you. You're reaching and you're pulling behind you. You ought to pull that mess behind you and reach for what's in front of you. Pull that failure behind you and reach for what's in front of you. Pull yesterday's victories behind you and reach for what's in front of you because God has more for every one of us. You can do better. You can overcome. You can get stronger, but you got to forgive yourself and let it go and say, Lord, here I am. I'm ready to pursue. Lift your hands and shout yeah. Yeah. How many are still glad to be in the press? If you're glad to be in it, give God praise. If you're glad to be in it, thank him. How do you like what I said? Said about your past. Past is not relevant. Good God almighty. You got to know how to shake that off. Shake that off. Shake that off. Shake it off. Don't surround yourself with people who try to keep you there. I've, I know how to tune folk out. Good God Almighty. Good God Almighty. Because I'm on my way somewhere. How many can say you're on your way? Going up the King's Highway. And I can't afford to let you keep me in that place of my failure. I can't afford to let you constantly remind me, good God Almighty, of my worst day. Because that better days ahead. Ah, the things that God has for us. Lift your hand and tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
thank you. Oh, thank you. I'm reaching. I'm going. I'm growing. I'm coming out and moving on. Paul said, I press. There it is. In verse 14, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God. I press. It is a continuous effort to pursue. I press. I press today. And I'm going to press tomorrow. And I'm going to press the next day. And I'm going to press next year. If I'm living, I'm pressing. I wonder, do I have anybody here who will say, Pastor, I'm pressing on. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on solid ground, on higher ground, on Christ, the solid rock I stand. Ah, on the ground is sinking sand. Say yeah. Ah, ah, give him praise in here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Shake somebody's hand and tell them, yes, I've messed up in my life. Tell them, yes, I've dropped the ball. But look at me. I'm going higher. 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 In the Lord. Say, yeah. Good God Almighty. word press an interesting little thing the word toward toward brother chase i want you to tell your daddy this when paul says i press toward then you make sure you tell your daddy that i said this you send it to him it's for bishop chase bishop be let because see your daddy got a saying and uh, it, it, it's spiritual in its significance when you're preaching hard, oh, Brother Chase always says, put your weight on it, press down on it, put your weight on it. Well, when Paul said, I press toward, if you look that word toward up in the Greek, it literally means to press down. In other words, to bear down on that goal when the enemy tries to distract you you bear down on that goal when the devil tries to scatter your thoughts you bear down on that goal i want you to lean on thank you for watching god first with bishop patrick l wooden senior and the upper room church of god in christ to experience this message in its entirety call 877-463-3477 to purchase a DVD or CD. God First will return next week at the same time. Until then, make every day a God First day. God First.